we now come to the fourth speaker. Uh, it's my pleasure to announce Gerald Meininger, who is the quality manager of the Lixtec um, Dynamic Light Solutions GmbH, um, a limited here, also located in Austria. I think also your um, background in the microelectronics um, nicely fits to the discussion just recently now had with Patrick about digital twin and all these things. So really happy to have you here. And um, Gerald, the floor is yours. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope you can see my presentation and uh, not the pop-ups from the uh, GoToMeeting. Is this correct? Uh, so thank you for uh, this opportunity to present Lixtech, uh, which is a, a spin-off. We've heard this before today. Uh, Lixtech is a spin-off of MIT, which is also a member of uh, the BioNanoNet. Uh, but Lixtech is in the business of uh, offering dynamic light solutions. Um, it it's a rather simple uh, subject, but uh, quite difficult to really uh, bring it to market uh, as far as uh, technology is concerned as, and as well as uh, business. So I'd like to lead you to the subject um, in, a, in a brief way. Uh, the agenda is uh, more on a, a global scale, challenges and opportunities in that uh, aspect, uh, and the need for a need-based uh, streetlight system then the so solutions we are offering and why we joined beyond nanonet uh, so what does it mean uh, dynamic light solutions uh, in one sentence i'd say uh, light only when needed so we all know that uh, light is uh, very very common in our lifetime uh, if you are up in an airplane maybe not nowadays but uh, you might remember the times a year ago when you were able to travel by plane you could see uh, over metropolitan areas, huge uh, light illuminated uh, areas. And not all of that is, is really needed all the time. So this is where we, we get in. We would like to uh, comply with uh, our uh, responsibility of our generation to reduce uh, the energy consumption. But also we would not like to uh, sacrifice really that's what we what we want and that's what we what we do that's why we offer um need-based illumination so in one sentence you go down the road uh, the light is on and you're not there anymore the light is off so this has uh, numerous positive impacts uh, for one it uh, helps us uh, achieving climate targets uh, which we all know is is quite difficult or more difficult than we we thought uh, a while back and uh, we can reduce the light pollution, which is uh, a more and more uh, problem in, in recent times because of new light technologies. Uh, we introduce even brighter uh, luminaires, and for that uh, we interfere more and more with our flora and fauna. And uh, also we can increase or further increase the efficiency of uh, light uh, fixtures. We now have uh, great technologies at hand, uh, such as LED technology, which has a tremendous uh, output uh, of lumen per watt, um, which is very good. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it offers us the opportunity to really turn on and off the light in, in a way and in a frequency, meaning in, in terms of uh, 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 how often you turn it off and on. Uh, without having any sacrifices on or mostly no sacrifices in terms of uh, life expectation. This would not be possible with all technologies. So this all comes into play and helps us to, to provide solutions for that. And so we can uh, maximize the energy saving, uh, we can reduce the light pollution, and we can contribute to achieve our climate uh, goals. So here's uh, some schematics to show you uh, the four really main uh, drivers of this technology and uh, I've, I've discussed before. Um, so you would say, you might say, well, I know that already is uh, in existence. We can turn on lights uh, by timer, we can turn on lights by different means of sensor technologies, so, but you all are very uh, technically savvy uh, audience, so I'd like to 
dive a little deeper into the technologies and uh, point out what type of technology we use and why this uh, is uh, a better approach. I mean, most common uh, of an event-based sensor system is uh, a passive infrared sensor. It's a very common, very cost uh, efficient and uh, very simple to use. Uh, there is a third technology which I have not put on uh, display. It's a camera-based system because of data security issues. This is not really a, uh, an area we can explore here. Uh, in other areas of the world this might be easier, but here it's not so easy. So this uh, is out of our focus. Uh, so we decided uh, to use radar-based technology because it has uh, numerous advantages. First of all, it's uh, temperature uh, insensitive. This is uh, crucial because the temperature difference between summer and winter is quite huge and uh, a passive infrared sensor uh, detects uh, different temperatures between the moving object and uh, the surrounding area. And if you think about an, uh, a pavement uh, in summertime, uh, right after sunset, uh, it can easily reach or even exceed the temperature of a body, uh, a human body. So the sensor is basically blind. Uh, the other extreme would be in winter. Uh, you all know it from your uh, uh, passive info sensor at home. Uh, a cat walks by and the light goes on. This is not uh, what you want. And that would uh, put stress on the electronics. That would uh, increase the power consumption. It would uh, create false positives. But this is actually not the best technology. So we use the uh, radar-based systems in order to uh, have system that really works regardless of environment uh, impacts. Of course it has some downsides as well. So if you know from uh, uh, old satellite uh, dish uh, television reception there is one uh, uh, event uh, when there is a very strong uh, snowfall you would see that the, the picture is not uh, clear, it's grainy, uh, but uh, this is actually not very often. So these downsides are not uh, very important, and that's why this is, in our opinion, the best uh, technology. You can see it also, it's been used today for like uh, automotive industries, for uh, uh, distance radar systems. So it's a uh, very good uh, technology, and we use it. And this uh, really brings us to uh, the next uh, slide, which then shows uh, these items uh, in, in, in pictures. Um, the the right-hand side shows uh, an older generation uh, from Lixtec. It's called Lixdetect SLC. It can be mounted on a, on a pole, so you can uh, use it uh, as you wish. You can mount it after you installed the light poles already, or you can uh, install it during a rollout. Uh, you can also use it for a very high pole length. So this is a, a very good system which has been uh, established for for quite some time in the market and uh, is very reliable and uh, there are no problems uh, whatsoever. Uh, the newer uh, technology is the Lix1. It's a very really small sensor system. It has a diameter of uh, three inches uh, roughly and a height of uh, less than two inches. So it's very tiny, it has everything included. Sensor technology, uh, wireless transmission to the neighboring poles, uh, and as well as a controller. So this is a really actually a plug and play solution. So uh, because the industry has uh, already agreed to a common standard as far as the connector is concerned. So you can uh, refit uh, uh, luminaires as long as they have this, uh, it's called Zaga, Zaga a connector uh, is in place, then you can refit it. So this is a really nice uh, add-on because it really helps you to not uh, have to invest twice in a, in a modern illumination uh, technology because it could be that you have already mounted a LED pole and then uh, you figure out you, you cannot really use a, a sensor because there is no connection then you can uh, either use the Lix Detect system uh, or you uh, use for future uh, rollouts then uh, a luminaire based with this connector. So it's really in a, in a way of future proof and uh, this, this helps a lot. And the good thing really is about this uh, radar technology that you can uh, actually uh, really look at the, the traffic as it comes. All the other 
uh, solutions which try to go around that by using uh, algorithms to say, well, at night we turn off uh, or uh, at rush hour we, we have more light and uh, during this more quiet times we have less light. This all is not needed because you really have light if there's one person there, one car there, and if there's many, then you have light. If there's only one, you have light. If there's none, you have no light. So this is really nice. Um, there's also a backend available, uh, but you don't really need it. Uh, you you don't uh, have to use it. Uh, it works as a standalone system, but if you want it, you can um, have it. Then what are our future possibilities? Uh, we'd like to increase uh, the, the processing uh, capabilities and uh, we'd like to uh, be able to classify uh, depending on, on what product it is. Uh, is it a, a, a truck? Is it a bus? Is it a car? This would help uh, communities a lot in order to, to see who is uh, driving. When are people uh, obeying the uh, nightly limitations in, in, in truck traffic, for example, and th things of that nature. So why did we join Bionanonet? Uh, first of all, we are already uh, with Mates, a partner from, or a member of Bionanonet. Uh, we already have uh, appreciated the, the network uh, as well as uh, the, the leadership from, from Bionanonet. And we, we really try to find potential project partners. Uh, we try to uh, find opportunities in, in respect to research and innovation programs. Um, and networking is very important for us. So we were happy to be able to join, let's put it that way. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, essentially the end of uh, my, my presentation. And if you have any questions, please, uh, uh, go ahead and uh, we have the final discussion and which is open to everybody and I'm very happy to, to answer all your questions. Thank you.